Before the Eternals, there was the Inhumans. Yeah, we're talking about that show. Back in the day when Kevin Feige didn't have total control of Marvel Television, we had Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Netflix shows. And then we got the wonderful, amazing, totally not trash Inhumans. We had never seen it, so the two of us sat down and watched the first two episodes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say, man. And they, re they released that in the IMAX theaters. Left shocked at how this travesty made it onto television, let alone had an IMAX premiere in theaters? Oh, come on. We asked ourselves, well, maybe it was just the first two episodes they rushed. Let's give the next episode a shot. Well, our hopes were dashed when we realized it was actually worse than the first two. After we snapped ourselves back to reality and washed away the stink that was the Inhumans, it only took three days. We began to wonder how this dumpster fire was greenlit and actually made it to television, let alone IMAX theaters. So we did some research online, and this is what we found out. Grab some popcorn and your favorite beverage, because we're going to get into it. This is the story of how the Inhumans came to be. Remember when Iron Fist was announced, and we were all hopeful that we'd finally get to see a great live screen adaptation of Danny Rand? Marvel Television and Netflix did great things with their previous iterations of Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and Luke Cage. Despite the troubles Marvel Television was having getting Iron Fist into production, people were still excited when Scott Buck was announced as showrunner. Up until this point, Scott Buck was best known for Six Feet Under, Dexter, and Tremors 4. The legend begins. You missed with a cannon! Scott Buck. Remember this name. So, with the success of these characters on Netflix, we all knew that Marvel was gearing up for a Defenders show. Even with the production delays of Iron Fist, it still had to be finished before Defenders hit screens. It was even delayed as it was supposed to come out after Jessica Jones, but instead, Luke Cage took that spot. My bad. Right. In December 2015, Scott Buck was named showrunner of Iron Fist. What does this have to do with Inhumans? Bear with us, it has a lot to do with it. It's infamously known that Buck didn't even want to be showrunner of Iron Fist. A vast amount of people turned down the gig as they found it difficult to bring Danny Rand to screen. After a lot of reported begging by Jeff Loeb, Scott Buck signed on. Episodic television has become huge in the last decade, and finding competent showrunners has been a bit difficult for studios. Okay, still with us? Iron Fist began filming in April 2016, and wrapping in October 2016. Do you remember what Marvel announced in November 2016? Come on everybody, maybe? That's right, Inhumans, with Scott Buck as showrunner. So, how did this happen, and how did it happen so fast? We all know Iron Fist didn't turn out so well, yet even before post-production on Iron Fist, they gave Scott Buck Inhumans. What happened? Well, apparently, IMAX looked at their schedule for 2017. Calendar time for Buddy. And noticed they had two gaps in it. The big one was Labor Day weekend, and they wanted to fill it with something that would get butts into theaters. What gets butts into theaters? Marvel. IMAX, used to working with Marvel, hit them up and asked if they had anything to fill this date and keep butts in the theaters for a few weeks. It's a well-known fact that Disney loves to put their studios against each other to get maximum value out of productions. Look at Disney Animation and Pixar. How this IMAX deal landed in the lap of Jeff Loeb at Marvel Television is unknown. It could be they wanted to add some spring to Feige's step and gave it to Marvel Television, or Feige didn't want to rush out a project. Either way, Marvel Television grabbed that ball like Thanos grabbing Loki's neck. Reportedly, Jeff Loeb really wanted all all the prestige and attention Kevin Feige gets. It's evident in the Comic-Con panels he puts on or any interviews. So a chance to shine like Feige on the big screen? Hell yeah, there was only one problem. It had to be done in six weeks. But hey, Marvel didn't care because IMAX. So here you have Scott Buck, who had to build Iron Fist up in four months and shoot it, then was named showrunner for Inhumans even before Iron Fist premiered, and he had to create the show from scratch. And all this took place in the span of less than two years. Great no one will be left to observe, there's no one left to care. Sure, there were existing scripts kicking around. Ike Perlmutter apparently really loved Inhumans because he wasn't happy X-Men was sold to Fox, so he really wanted to get it made to stick it to him. Sour grapes. <laughs> now is this a justification for how bad Inhumans was? Not entirely. There's a lot of choices that beg a lot of questions, but you can see why they decided to shave Medusa's head early on so they didn't have to deal with the expensive CGI. I'm sorry. <laughs> She'd given me no choice. We didn't even get to see how Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. looked like it was setting up the Inhumans, or how Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was bumped to make room for the Inhumans. We didn't even really talk about what was really bad in the show. So we'll end this with our new What the f segment. What's that? My hoof. It looks like a hoof. A what? It's Triton. Triton. 
Brighton is dead. That you can hardly imagine that I have thoughts of my own that I can carry through. It's your arrogance that is... Hey, what's going on here, man? I guess I had a seizure. To the mines you go. What? What's happened to me? So, you're one of them. No. You're one of them. Do you agree that Inhumans was a travesty, or did it have some merit? No. It's painful. Let us know in the comments as we do read all of them. Even though The Eternal seems to be a very divisive film, it can't be as bad as Inhumans, right? Right? And with that, we never have to speak of Inhumans again. This has been That James Guy and Dan Plum. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Like, who, who greenlit that? Who greenlit that?